You didn't need Nicholas Copernicus to tell you that the inflation data on Wall Street today was going to be harsh. All you needed to do was go to the grocery store and get gas in the last couple weeks and you could have told Wall Street last night what this data set was going to look like this morning. Treasury yields, once again, very compressed and very inverted all of the sudden. Consumer sentiment sitting at a 40-year low. No coincidence, inflation at a 40-year high. And real estate. It is looking healthier and more sustainable, but the one thing I don't understand is mortgage rates want to go down, but for some odd reason, the Federal Reserve will not let this happen. Welcome back to the special Inflation Friday edition of This Week in Mortgage. My name is Sam Batania, your mortgage broker here at Guaranteed Rate in Beverly Hills. I hope you've had a great week. Well, stock market, uh, it's Friday after 1 o'clock here in Los Angeles on the West Coast. Markets are closed, and that... Uh, but you some people are hoping they don't open for another 10 days the way this week went. A uh, couple of notes here. Clearly, risk continues to be off. What everybody's trying to figure out is where is the bottom. But I can tell you this. This has been one of the most orderly sell-offs in the history of Wall Street since I've been watching it for about 25 years. It's going to be a very long road for a lot of these stocks to recover to anything near their all-time highs. And some of them may not ever get there again. So a couple more notes on Wall Street, general things. I've heard in the past, bulls and bears make money and sheep get slaughtered. And that's look, that looks like what's happening here now. If the markets don't recover soon, the only way they can go is down. Stocks, every time there's a bear market rally, because that's what we're essentially in now, take out the big numbers on the indexes, there's always selling into strength. And what I find to be funny at this point is people on TV trying to call a bottom and trying to pick a recession date. It's literally laughable. Now, when stocks trade the way they do real companies, quote unquote, when they trade like penny stocks, that is a clear sign of a top and it looks like we're clearly topped out right now based on the internals of the market. And a couple of things with these analysts on Wall Street, they used to call them stockbrokers, now they call them money managers, same thing. I wish we would have an analyst on Wall Street that would tell you to sell a stock or downgrade it before it's not down 50 or 70 percent. Anybody can pick stocks by throwing a dart at the board in a up market with the Federal Reserve pumping money in the system. I'd love to see a stock broker, money manager, whatever you call them, I'd love to see them say sell the stock when it's up 200 percent. So I don't get what the value of these money managers is. If they can't outrun the S&P 500, and their advice is never sell your stocks, what do you need them for? I think a lot of people right now, because this sell-off has been so darn orderly, that they're wondering, what is their money manager doing other than watch their stocks go down every day? Because sometimes in this world, you do have to make a call, and I can't find a guy on Wall Street that's willing to make a call at the top. They always want to downgrade something that's already down. In my opinion, that isn't a real job. That is literally collecting money to tell people you're managing their money and making them think that you're smarter than them when meanwhile you know that you know nothing and your analysts internally know nothing more than the average person watching TV every day. But this is the one piece of advice I can give you. If you wanna watch where the stock market's going, watch the options market. When it comes to the options market, whether people going long on puts, I'm sorry, short on puts or long on calls, everybody isn't right. Whichever way you see the crowd jump into, odds are they're wrong and the market will go in the opposite direction. All right, once again, enough on Wall Street, but that seems like the popular thing these days. All right, Treasury yields. Uh, we're back to the sell everything mentality. People are selling stocks and selling bonds. Yields are indeed inverting again. Uh, I believe that the 210 spread, the two year note and the 10 year note spread is like 12 basis points right now. It was 30 at the beginning of the week. Uh, the five-year is higher than the 10-year, once again, and it might even be higher than the 30-year note. And uh, what this is, these are classic signs of a recession to come, but odds are, I said that the Federal Reserve put us into a recession two months ago, odds are today's inflation data, the market selling off, the hysteria behind what happened on Wall Street, specifically today, when everybody knew the inflation data was gonna be bad, yet it's a surprise that the market sold. Uh, I would say we're in a recession, officially call it right now, and uh, we will see these numbers in real life sometime at the end of July, because a recession, by definition, is two consecutive quarters of slower growth, which that's pretty clear that we're in that right now. All right, the most important thing in our economy, consumer sentiment. 
Uh, the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey came out. Consumer sentiment sitting at a 40-year low speaks for itself. Uh, the problem with our economy, in my opinion, is this. In 2008, the stock market and the economy learned that if you're too big to fail, the government will bail you out. So ever since then, if you notice, when the stock market has the Federal Reserve on their side, the stock market acts right. It goes up, what people want it to do. When the Federal Reserve is backing off at a few different times since 2008, stocks go down. So the game is pretty simple at this point. I'm not saying I can predict it. I can just say that the problem in our economy and our stock market is we're too dependent on the Federal Reserve. Back to my point of capitalism with socialism sprinkled in, that's what this is. We can't have a capitalistic economy that's dependent on government to supplement it when it goes down. That's not capitalism. It's capitalism with socialism sprinkled in. And if you want to call it cap socialism, have at it. But it's not capitalism. And the stock market should go up based on companies' earnings, not on if the government's going to pump money into the system and people are going to buy stocks with it and companies are going to buy their stocks back with it. That's not a real market. But I hope you took your profits because it might be a while till people can say, take their profits again. And when it comes to the consumer, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, the consumer is now saying no because they're getting sick of literally getting ripped off uh, every time they go try to buy something. So consumer rules a day, 70% of the U.S. economy. U.S. economy is probably 25% of the world economy. Stop squeezing the consumer because the consumer has already started to say no. All right, real estate. Uh, I have been seeing a lot of uh, changes in the market. Uh, one of them, though, is just a, uh, a, a change by word. Usually we see the word price reduction out there. What I've been seeing lately is a couple of really smart agents have been using the term price improvement. It's the exact same thing. It's just easier on the eyes when you see the term price improvement. So kudos to those agents using the word price improvement, the term price improvement, rather than the term price reduction. That just sounds better to me. All right, the market itself, the numbers of number of offers on homes are down. But I actually like that because it's good, it's sustainable, and more so it's real because people aren't stretching that hard to get a home right now when it comes to their mortgage because of the lack of affordability. Every offer being made, if vetted properly right now, should not fall out of escrow. Inventory, as I mentioned, it started turning a little bit a few weeks ago. It's actually starting to look better to me. Uh, just in real life, there's just more stuff out there. Whether it's priced right or not, it's here nor there. There's just more inventory, which is going to bode well for the market coming up. And as I mentioned, interest rates on mortgages want to go down, but the Federal Reserve won't let that happen. I actually don't know what their plan is with housing, but where the yield is today on the 10-year Treasury at 3.15, that's not good for housing. If we go up to 3.5 on the 10-year Treasury, I have some very affluent clients who will not be able to afford the home that they want to buy that I wrote them a pre-approval on this week if rates go up another half percent. So let's hope that doesn't happen because then affordability is blown out of the water. Uh, but at this point, we've got to figure the Federal Reserve has to figure out what its plan is with housing because if it keeps mortgages keep going up, it's going to sink the housing market in terms of uh, pretty much everything slowing down and then we might see values get hit uh, if rates go up more. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but the part about this market I like is I think these insanely short escrow periods are gone. Uh, agents needing no contingencies when you have financing, hopefully those days are gone. People waiving all their contingencies, hopefully people aren't gonna ask people to do that anymore. Hopefully those days are gone. And a quick little note, when you have a lack of affordability, that's a buyer's market. A Little bit of that right now. When you have a lack of inventory, that's a seller's market. A Little bit of that right now. My opinion is when you combine the two, you have more of a normal, sustainable market. And hopefully we get a lot of that right now. All right, everybody, that is my show for this week. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any real estate or mortgage related questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Have a great weekend.